Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. I am now starting our presentation. We are already, uh, we are already live. And I'll start our recording right now. And I'll let all the people in. So you are now the, and uh, let me just, there we are. Hello, good, good morning. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for bearing up with me and uh, waiting through this uh, small mishap. And uh, well, it is a pleasure for me to introduce our speakers for this talk today. They are going to talk to us about listening circles. So I'm really interested and curious to see what's going to be about. We have with us Fanny Castañeda Moreno. Fanny Castañeda is a teacher at the Benemerita Escola Normal de Coahuila. She coordinates the quality management system of the institution. She has taught courses in professional practice, teaching of natural science, and currently an English course. And her partner, Miguel Eduardo Luna, is a lawyer, a thanatologist, and a life coach. One of his passions is uh, languages. He's delivered, he's delivered different language courses since 2007, such as English, French, German, and in several countries for private and public institutions. Nowadays, he teaches English at the Benemerita Escola Normal de Coahuila. At the end of the talk, we will have some time for questions and without further ado, Please join me in welcoming Fanny and Miguel. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Miguel, can you share the screen, please? Can you help us? Yes. Yeah, can you guys see? Okay, yeah, right. yes, good enough. Let me, let me go wet screen. Okay, ready? Thank you. Okay, yes, uh, we are going to present you today this topic about listening circles, a pivotal measure to enhance English learning. Uh, we, we are from Saltillo, Coahuila, from Benemérito Escuela Normal de Coahuila. We are Miguel Eduardo Luna Hernández and Fanny Castañeda Moreno. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Well, Selman said something that is very, very important for us in this, in this topic, that is before we meet before anyone speaks, even before we think, we are always listening and we are always navigating in the context that listening provides. Well, listening, it's a learned process and also it's a skill that we can improve on with a specific effort. Yeah, improving our listening skills can, be benefit, can benefit us in academic and professional and personal and many, many more contexts. The next one, please. Thank you. Okay, as an introduction, we can, we can mention three principal ideas. One of them is that good listener is, do we have the, the screen here? Yeah. Good listeners, are equals effective communicators. Communication involves receiving information and doing something with the messages and knowledge. We process the information given according to a plurality of aspects, external and internal, such as the environment surrounding us, and also our personal interpretation influenced by, by our life, 
experiences and the cultural, the background, for instance. The second idea is that listening shapes our uh, shapes and influences our languages. Well, because humans have an, an innate tendency to imitate, being a good listener is quite relevant for language construction. And the third idea is that there is a notorious difference between English as a foreign language and English as a second language learners. Since ESL learners are constantly exposed to the target language, English in this case, their performance is generally higher or at least more accurate to other core areas of language, such as reading, writing, and, and speaking. It is vital to provide English learners, especially in EFL courses, courses the mean to improve their listening comprehension skills. So it leads them to develop and upgrade the other core and secondary areas in, in English language learning. The next one, please. We can talk about the, the problem description and starting from the idea that listening is a skill of great relevance. On the one hand, a very well-known fact is that human beings learn through, through language input. And that input mostly comes from listening, passively or actively, but, but listening. Uh, also, we all know that in an English certification, certification exam, for example, the test section for listening skill is one with the hardest time for the students. Uh, it is by listening that a person imitates, uh, copies, associates, modulates, and expands their, their language. Or only by considering how an individual starts speaking, it is quite easy to realize that listening skill is critical and serves as the foundation of language creation and, and of speaking itself. With the interest of paying closer attention to developing the listening skill on English le learners at the Nemerita Escuela Normal de Coahuila, we're having this specific skill well developed with results in better quality in communication ex exchanges. And of course, a greater expansion for the language in process of learning. It was decided to develop and carry out the current experimental project with the aim of documenting how much English learners improve uh, their listening comprehension by making them execute diverse uh, well-framed roles in a scheme of very specific assignments while being exposed to a certain number of pieces of audio previously selected for, for the classes. The next one, please. Uh, talking about the theoretical framework, we can recognize, we can emphasize a few ideas. For example, that we, cre we create words and associate ideas to them because of an exposure to language. Another good idea, big idea is that a big part of language is actually learned by imitation. Uh, good listening comprehension first involves building an understanding of individual words as sentences in a story by this idea by Hogan, Adolf and Alonso. And that there is a notorious difference between EFL and ESL learners. The next one, next one please. Listening, thank you. Listening circles activities are exercises not as efficiently promoted or frequently heard as, as reading circle activities, for example, at least in, in English courses. The, the academic English in United Kingdom say that listening circles can be, can be very successful in, a, in encouraging students to engage more deeply with text by approaching them from different perspectives and discovering their different elements before rebuilding them with better understanding of the world bigger picture. Brooks said that although the relevance of listening circles, listening itself may be difficult due to learners short term memory, the capacity to create a mental map of what they are listening, listening to, and as they are exposed to a piece of of audio and the way they interpret the audio content because of their cultural influence. The next one, please. 
Mm, Duarte said that language is not within us, but is among us. That is very, very interesting idea. Learners often struggle with contextualized listening due to an, an inability to connect new information to old information, as well as difficulty following cues and making predictions. Uh, the me metacognitive strategies can decrease anxiety and increase listening comprehension. Participants practice identifying and developing pre and post listening metacognitive strategies said by Barba and Santana. And the next one, please. Well, the academic learning circles are a collaborative student focused individual and group activity that aims to help students understand course audiovisual text very well so that they can use them in ways that we will otherwise use any text in an academic environment, Okubo in 2019. Well, there are different approaches when it comes to talk about roles to be played out in listening circles. Now, our roles proposed in this, in this project, uh, since we made this listening practice by working on teams, where students were able to complete these four roles that you can see here. One is language and meaning. The other role was background and context. The third one was a structure and organization. And the fourth role was delivery. In our school, the Benemérita Escuela Normal de Coahuila, we have one program that is Licenciatura en Educación Primaria. And um, Miguel, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Fanny. Thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone. Nice to meet you. And yeah, my name is Miguel Luna. And before continuing, uh, I would like to just uh, stand out uh, different, just some um, simple, uh, simply, I would, I'd like to say something which is, uh, which I found really relevant about this uh, project is that my, my partner and I, uh, Fanny and I, we, we came up with this idea. Uh, we came up, yeah, we, we came up with this idea because different things. One, actually, they were mentioned in the, in the slides. But mostly because, firstly, we found that uh, students in the in the in those important exam exams or tests examinations, either by, to get a certification exam or not, to, to get certificate or certi certified or not, uh, students that were struggling with uh, with listening. That is quite interesting how the statistics say that actually uh, it is the reading. It is not the reading, not the writing, but actually the listening part and the part in which students are having really they really struggle with. And we found that quite interesting. And then the second was that actually uh, reading circles, I mean, reading circles are pretty popular around the world in our courses, but not as much listening circles. Listening circles are not as popular as reading circles. We found that also um, interesting to, to take a look at. And, um, and we, we thought, why not implementing not a reading circle activity, but actually listening circle activities, to be honest, my partner and I, when we uh, agreed on, on, on working on this project, we we pretty much knew like nothing, okay? Like uh, not that much. And that was actually an, an incentive for us to, to go on it, research on the topic, research on the topic and, and go for it because we found that actually there are not much like literature as it is for reading circles, but at least there are some I mean that there is yeah definitely there's some literature but as not as much as extended as much as extended as the for reading circles so we found that quite interested those 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 topics so that I I, wanna, I, I stopped the um, the consecution of the of the of the slideshow because I wanted to point out those uh, points which are quite interesting for us and yeah as as you know well we. We came up with uh, the idea of uh, working on this project, which I think was quite um, successful. I, I'd say, I'm sorry, let me go, I started over. Just let me go to the corresponding slide. Just give me a minute, please. It is charging. Okay, so what, what, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about what was the experimental activity about, what was it like, uh, what are the outcomes, what specifically we did, uh, etc. All right, so first of all, we need to set the background and context. Uh, the, the project, as my partner just uh, already mentioned, it was delivered 
conducted at the Benimate Escuela Normal de Coahuila, exclusively at this school, in which back, back, in the, back then, when, when we had those, those groups, they, it was <clears throat> implemented with two English courses. It is to mention that those courses, they, they were different level courses. The first one was A2, I would say more specifically A2.1 or A2 minus, okay, uh, level. And the other one was B2 levels, both, both, I would say minus, okay, A1, A1 point, A2.1 and B2.1 levels. So the, something important about this is that uh, it, is, it is to mention that these two, two groups, they were, they were quite interesting per se because of different reasons. One, in one group, which is the A2 group, there were 14 students. As for B2 level, there were 15 students. Okay, but actually those students, they were not, they, they, they were part of the, those groups, but I would say that uh, as it happens a lot, uh, there were students who shouldn't be there. They should be in a higher level uh, as the, the same case for the B2 level, okay, for the B2 level students. I mean, some of those students, practically half of them, they should be in a high level and the other half, they came from a course, the B1.1 course, they moved to directly to the B2.1 course, that, which means, meaning they skipped B1.2 course because of the lack of professors at Benemérica Escuela Nueva de Coahuila, meaning uh, English teachers, okay? But anyway, the, the things that, well, we, it was kind of challenging the idea because when we carried out this, um, these experimental activities, it was, kind of difficult to pick the correct audio pieces that would be that would be uh, there for the students to, to to listen to because of this because of the situation i mean for we thought my partner and i we thought for some students it would be quite easy but maybe for the other ones they they, they would be quite difficult so we need to be in the middle uh to make an appropriate uh to have the students to work on appropriate pieces of audio, right, for these listening activities. So that is the background and context. I want you to, the idea was to make it more graphic and so to help you guys to picture, to picture the whole scenario where we were working at. So as, let me go to the next one. All right, and then it comes experimental activity design. So what we did, it, it took uh, several weeks from, I don't really remember if it was weeks or even months to, to to pick the right pieces of audio, the, the stitches, etc. But we came up with this. Experimental activity design was developed and carried out during the academic year 2020, 2021. And it, we, it, six experimental activities were completed, carried out, three per group. I, as a reminder, uh, we had two groups, A2, B2, and three activities per group were carried out. Okay, and then it comes to several stages implemented. That was quite interesting, even though that we have several stages implemented because we totally needed to, to separate and split the audios. I mean, we were not using the same, we did not use the same audio pieces of audio for the B2 group. Obviously, they were not the same for the A2 group because we needed to respect those, the level of the, of the, of the learners. Um, so even though that there were several stages implemented, there were some common base and uh, common base characteristics in execution and components. So those common base execution components were that the, during the activities there was some uh, there were some activities who needed to be carried out individually, and there were uh, other ones who needed to be carried out in group. All right. So but in general. In general, because this is a resume, right? Um, there was a pretest before listening to the audio. Was pretest. There was a post-test. There was a control group activity and exper in the experiment per se. Okay. So um, if we were to go a little bit specific about what would they were this this uh, these eight steps let me tell you something step number one was the english class was divided in groups of four members each we i i want you to picture that i'm talking as i'm talking individual groups okay which means let's say that you're the english teacher in the a2 group or in the 
B2 group, okay? So these eight steps that were in common, that were commonly worked out, worked over uh, for both groups, and I just want you to picture that you are the English professor in one of those groups, okay? So in one of those groups, say, uh, we had 16 students per se, for example. So the first step was the English class was divided in four member, four member, four member teams, each class, which means uh, in the say in the in the in, in the class with 16 students there were four teams of four member each okay so the idea was to give the opportunity to each learner to choose one of the four roles to play out but i'm going to go a little bit uh, deeper on those roles but actually there were four roles that were given to the students they chose one role to play out okay so the 16 members of the class were divided or split into four into four teams, each team containing four members, and each member chose one role to play out, which those roles were different. That is, that is, that is important to mention. Number two, step number two, paying full attention, all learners would listen entirely to that piece of audio. Obviously, that piece of audio was previously selected by my partner or myself. Okay, so the idea was exposing entirely and without any visual aid to the, to the, to the learner. Okay, so that learner that would be just listening, paying attention, uh, using only his ears or her ears uh, listening to the piece of audio. Mm, okay, so now once the, the listener, no, once, I'm sorry, yeah, once the listener uh, concluded listening to the audio, they would go immediately to a survey form that my, my partner and I we previously prepared on Google Classroom. It was a uh, on Google Forms. It was a survey that it was previously previously prepared in which we actually prepared some questions asking the students how much of the piece of or the piece of audio they had understood. And what we did was um, that we uh, it was a multiple choice question. So they go from I understood from zero to ten percent, from ten from eleven to twenty, from twenty one to thirty percent from 31 to 40 percent so on okay so the what we were trying to do was trying to collect how much they understood the piece of audio before doing or carrying out the actual listen activity the listening circle activity okay so the idea was recording how much they actually previously understood before the activity because as the Step number three, the script for the audio previously listened, obviously, was given to each, to each story. This was kind of uh, unexpected because the students were like, teacher, but this is an, uh, a listening circle, this is an activity per se, and you are actually giving us the script. And we were like, yeah, that is the idea. That is the idea to help your, uh, to help your brain associate what you're listening with what you're reading. So what, was, what, what we did was uh, we, had the, we had printed this piece of paper with the script and they had to re-listen, they had to listen again, the same audio, piece of audio, but this time what they're doing, they were listening and they were, as they listened, they were reading, okay? So the same audio would be played on, we will play it on once again, as I said before, but this time the English learners, they would read the script as they listen to the track. After, afterwards, some time was given at the end of the audio, some time was given at the end of the audio, so they could take notes according to the specific role they had previously chosen. I insist we're going to go over that those roles. I remind you that if there were four, there were, that, there were four roles, that's why there were four members in each team. So what they did was, uh, I'm listening to the audio, but I'm actually only paying attention what my role is supposed to be about. Okay, so uh, that, was, that was the interesting part because as we, we listen a lot, it was actually active listening practice, what we, we were doing. Probably I understood um, pretty much maybe about what my role, my partner's role was about, but that was not my job this time. My job was exclusively focusing on what my role is about, and I would listen and I would make and take notes about what my specific role is about. So in uh, later on, 
Some analysis, research, and conclusive comments will be carried out individually. The step number five is actually in a private meeting, I mean, among those guys, those 14 members, in a private meeting, uh, each learner, pay attention to this, it was quite interesting, each learner would comment or, or would pass on this, uh, the, the discoveries, those discoveries they reached, those those the, the, they had a specific assignment. So according to that assignment, they would comment to the rest of the team. They would comment what's going on. Okay, I found this. I discovered that. Uh, I found this because actually they they needed to carry out uh, emotionally all the activities. Yeah, I remember that they needed to carry out some research, and afterwards, concluding finish concluding the research, they would. Uh, they would make an analysis, an internal analysis, then they would communicate to the partners what they, their findings, okay? That's what that was, it was all about. So that was the next step. Now that, I'm, uh, that, I, now that I have all the, the information with me, the next step is to what we call in Escuelas Normales, so very typically used or heard, socialize, right? That they need to socialize, they need to uh, share the information that they came up to. So that was in a general room with with uh, that was in a general room now with the teacher okay because previously the they mm, they found out the information they shared the information and now they needed to confirm the information is not that the teacher we the english teacher is not that they, we english teacher we needed to say if the information was correct or not but we were doing this just modulating uh supporting uh participations hey who found out this? What did you find out? What did you share? What did you what did you discover? What was the, what was the, what you told about to your students, to your classmates, etc. So we're just promoting the participation and considering that the same role that one member, one team member, the the same role one team member was carrying it out, there was probably another student in front of in front of the, that team who was uh, carrying out the same role. Right. So what we what we did is if I had I was in charge in role number of role number one and my partner in the next team was in charge of the role number one, both we wanted we as a teachers we wanted to see what they both found and put all the information together. Okay. As uh, as the next activity was to now that we have the whole information together about role number one, role number two, role number three, role number four, we would listen again the same piece of audio, okay? And we would have the access to assimilate and associate everything was what is about the audio according to the specific roles, but now we have a general scenario together. Uh, as the last step or stage, is that they would now go back again to a, a different Google form survey and now they recorded or registered or marked how much they now fully had, had fully understood the audio. And let me tell you something, the, the, the conclusions were pretty satisfactory, but we'll go over that later. Um, let me change, let me go, let me move on. So the listening symbols, this listening circle roles. Let me tell you something. I, I think that we, unless my 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 partner Fanny thinks otherwise, but I don't think that. Well, at least me, Miguel Luna. I don't want to take credit for this because actually these listening circles about uh, they were not created, or invented, or just figured out by myself or by Fanny. We we did, we did it together. But uh, what we did was a lot of uh, really deep research and. Uh, it was pretty fun how uh, there is not much literature about this, but there is still some. And it is to mention, because actually my partner said so, but the, there are different authors, obviously, and different approaches to the listening circle roles with different names. Yeah, different objectives or goals per each role, but actually we can, we can put them together, all those different approaches from all these authors to these four these four roles that you're seeing on the on the screen, you're you're looking at those, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, so those listening circles is number one is language language and meaning. The learner 
takes notes of any unknown, specific, useful, difficult, or academic term or any expression for what? Those expressions which require cultural knowledge. It is quite interesting because I remember that years ago, I was, uh, I was, giving, I was delivering an English course and I had, um, I had a student who came from an autochthon zone in the country, rural, rural area, and we listened to a piece of audio which involved getting tickets at uh, getting tickets uh, from an airplane company as the with the receptionist. It was quite interesting because that person didn't know what was an airplane. All right, and and, and I was uh, what what was impressive was that actually that was that there was one person in the room which actually needed a little a, a, a little push to understand something which is cultural which is the airplane which is the airport which is the uh the boarding pass etc so but uh, we needed to go from the foundation which is not only talking about the boarding pass but actually talking about an actual airplane so um uh all right so in this case the learner is focusing specifically to any word any unknown not something which actually requires the cultural knowledge okay second background and context the learner relates who the speaker is and his or her role all right so uh the speaker who is talking is he speaking a boss is he speaking a ceo is he, is he speaking a priest is he speaking who is he speaking is he a father a mother a teacher uh, I don't know, a post office of a post post office officer who is really speaking, a police officer. So the learner sets the situation, background, and context, tells the reason and the importance of the lecture, and retells if there is any stance given. Yeah, that was quite interesting because the 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 this role number two was the, the person was actually helping to set the scenario. Okay, so to set the foundation is an area where the, the, the competition was uh, being created. Number three, a structure and organization. This learner tells how the lecture is organized. Is there an outline to follow? Okay, was that just a simple conversation in a bar without any introduction, without any uh, yeah, that anybody in the conclusion or they, or they, were, they were actually a, like an instructor, like I'm going to make an announcement. So there was an announcement and then this, the, there was the announcement of making an announcement and then the announcement. And then do you have any questions, conclusions, guys? So that person, they needed to focus on how the, the, the audio, the piece of audio was organized. The, this learner summarizes the main key, the main or key ideas. This is that that was the this goal was quite uh, really important. I'm not saying the other ones they were not, but actually this one was quite important because uh, my 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 partner Fanny Castaneda she mentioned that uh, sometimes we, when we are exposed to a especially to a to a long piece of audio, we tend to forget right because because of this uh, uh, short memory time span right. So we tend to forget certain things, and this guy. Or this person, this person number three, the structural organization person, he or she needed to summarize the main or key ideas. They actually re they related to examples given. Those examples, uh, which help to understand those main ideas. Okay, to connect main ideas or help understand them. Uh, and actually, also there is uh, as a final goal, this person tells if there is any conclusion or not. Let me move my head because I'm on the thing. So, okay, the person number four delivery, the learner focusing on, this is, this was really fun because the learner needed to focus on any gesture, emotional manifestation, facial, facial expression, type of accent, the speed of the speech, any visuals or any kind of language different than spoken, utilizing the lecture. Well, what is that about? Uh, we listened some, I remember listening some, um, some audios telling uh, the audio was set in uh, outside the airport, for example. So the, the person was looking for a place where to take a taxi, and uh, along the along the, the along the listening, there was a person saying, "Yeah, look at that sign. 
obviously the people in my the people in my class in the in funny's class in, in my class they were just listening to the audio without looking at that sign but actually this person the delivery person needed to take notes about that there was someone making a reference about making a reference to a, to a traffic sign or to whatever. So also the person needed to focus on what was the mood of the speakers. If there was someone crying, someone who listened concerned, someone who listened too excited, someone who listened really angry, mad, etc. So that was the job for the, per the person number four, which is delivery. Next. Okay, so as, as, as it was mentioned before, there was a pretest and it was a post test. Those we found pretty, uh, what, what can I say, but really important, I would say, critical, because before and after the listening circle activity, there was a record of how much they had previously understood and how much they actually understood afterwards. And I can tell the difference, they were pretty much. As I said before, for each question, there were 10 multiple option answers. I said so before from C. Hey, how much do you understand? I understand from zero to 10, from 11 to 20%, et cetera. After, no, previously and after the, the exercises. So um, I don't know if you remember that I said that we carried out six listening circle exercises were carried out. They took approximately more than an hour. I would say an hour and 20 uh an hour 30 probably yeah it would take practically the whole class um the audio for a2 for a2 for the a2 uh, level the students um, the audio was about two minutes maybe two minutes and a half maybe three i don't know and for b2 they were kind of longer i don't know uh, say four minutes four minutes and a half maybe five and they were especially revised they were listened by Fanny and by myself, and uh, we took them from a very uh, trustworthy resource on the internet, which is British Council, the, the website, you may know it, definitely, British Council, there are this British Council website in, in, with, the head, with the headlights in, uh, in green color, which is for adults, and there is another one for, in purple color, which is for, for younger learners, you remember that? So we took that from there, and we went specifically to practice this, which skill you want to practice? I want to practice the listening, listening comprehension. So we went on the listening comprehension tab in the other website, and uh, we chose among all the options there. We listened to each one of them, and uh, we chose different ones specifically for B for B two and others for B for A two, and that's what we did. So what were the the, the students' conclusive reflections? Um, at the very end. At the very end of the, not, not at the very end of each listening circle activity, but at the end of the three activities carry out, we couldn't have, we, we couldn't, we couldn't do four because of time, uh, because we started kind of, uh, I don't want to say late in the term, but uh, you know, bank students, they, well, not bank, as well as normal students, they find it busy with other uh, activities such as practical periods and projects and practices and theses and these and that. So uh, we could, so we could, um, it, would, we, it would have been great if we could have done the four activities because in that case, all of the four roles we would, would have been practiced, but in fact, but in fact, no, it happened only three. What we did was uh, the strategy we found kind of, uh, kind of uh, probably helpful was that if you, your name is Laura, Laura, if you practice role number one, the next time you want to practice a different role. If you practice number one and number two, in the, in the third one, you want to practice role number four. You see? So they actually tested different roles, but it would, would have been, it would have been awesome if you could have tested the four of them. It was not possible. Anyway, uh, after that, after the three activities per, per group, um, the students, they came, they came up with this kind of conclusions. Number one, we asked them, do you consider the listening circle activities useful? Number two, did the listening circle activities really help you understand the audio tracks or not? We wanted to know if it was true or not. Three, which role do you consider was more helpful? I really like this question. Number four, do you consider the listening circle activities contribute somehow to improve other language, other English language areas, such as grammar, vocabulary, lexicon, pronunciation, reading, etc.? 
we wanted to see if there was not only an improvement in your listening, if there was any, but if the response was affirmative, was there any other benefit in your English mastery, such as grammar, etc. Five, tell in your own words how the listening circle activities were or were not useful for you in terms of improvement your listening comprehension and or other language areas. So we came up with these questions. We received many, obviously, but uh, as a project conclusions, there are this. The very first contact with the audience to be comprehended always reported a higher number of scale spectrum reporting a minimum of five in all the six occasions the exercise were completed. Moreover, once the listening circle activities were developed, the range of scale variety was, variety was reduced to three, suggesting a more uniform level of listening comprehension. What does it say? What it, mean, what, 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 what it means is that at the, at the very beginning, when, do you remember that the, for the pretest, before, before um, actually working on the listening circle activities, the students, they were exposed to the listening, right? I told you so. So they were asked, how much do you understand? And the, the variety of responses, there was a lot. There, was, there were many students saying from, from 10 to 20%. And many students saying in the same group, in the same occasion, many students saying uh, there was a range of different responses, OK? Some saying 10 to 20, some saying 30 to 40, some say 70 to 60, 70 to 80, etc. There were a range of different, different responses. But afterwards, after the, the, the listening circle activities, when they were demanded again, how much do you actually understand from the audio now? There were maybe two or maybe three, uh, only range of variety of responses, not five as before. That's what it means. Um, wait. Next. In five out of six listening circle activities, meaning 83.3% of the times, the minimum range of understanding doubled, at least. That was really interesting. In five of the six listening listen, listen activities, okay? That was impressive. Next, 100% of the learners in both English groups think the listening circle activities were useful and contributed somehow to improve their English language areas in them. Actually, we received many comments saying, DJ, you know what? I know that it was a listening activity, but actually now I learned something about new, new vocabulary. New, new pronunciation because we are teaching. I don't know you guys in, in your in your in, in your practice, but actually at, 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 at this school, we're teaching them um, we're teaching them English language. I mean English without the American approach, American pronunciation, and so on. But when they go to certification for English certifications, they actually go and take and write British accent as exams. You know what I mean? They are taught in American English. They are taught American English, but actually, when they go for certification exams, they take British certification versions. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they said, you know what, teacher? Um, we found this kind of helpful because we now are more accustomed to the British pronunciation, at least accents and words, right? Instead of saying the floor, I live in the fifth floor, now they learned I live in the fifth flat. You know, things like that. And, and, and that was quite interesting. So it was not helpful for the listening part, but also in other areas. Also, it was observed the same patterns in both English groups. The listening circle roles considered the most helpful were language and meaning, background and context, and the structure and organization, respectively. So most, the mostly, the, the mostly found uh, um, helpful, if you want to put it that way. Is was the role the language and meaning role? Why? Because they learned a lot, a lot about vocabulary. Okay, the background context it was they found that it was quite also important for them because uh, they just some of at the beginning they just they were listening someone yelling at another person in the audio. There was a boss being mad to the receptionist to her, to his worker and the person was just yelling, but they they did not understand why. So setting the background and context helped them to understand the reason why the person was mad at the other, etc. So we're about to conclude. 
uh, saying that the learner's viewpoints related to the experimental project's outcomes, this is something that actually um, there was commented by, by, by them, all right? So number one, the vocabulary was increased and improved, as I said before. Number two, by understanding the situational context and background, it was possible to have a closer idea or totally understand the meaning of unknown words. That was really, it happens to us, right? I don't know if you're Spanish speakers, but it happens to us. I'm a Spanish speaker, right? So sometimes when I, when I don't really know the, the meaning of any word, if I'm listening to a politician speaking in a, in a, in a I don't know, in a complex word and, and saying something about politics, that's something that I don't really understand the terms in terms of signification of meaning of the word, the context helped me to have a very close or a total idea about what that person was even talking about, was talking about, even though that I didn't know, understand, I did not understand what <laughs> the meaning of the word, but at least I have a close or total idea. So that happened to the kids. Number three, grammar was improved and reinforced. Number four, an approach to British accent and pronunciation was possible, resulting in better understanding of such use. Why British? Because I insist we voted or we opted for uh, taking the, the audio tracks from the British Council website in the tab of skill, listening skill. Okay, and that's what they were exposed intentionally. They were exposed intentionally by us to the British because we thought we figured out that that will help them to get accustomed to the proximate or the future um, certification exam that they will go over to over, right? They would have to write. Five, before lack of ideas or more comprehension, there was times they have no idea what, what, what was the audio was about. The audio structure helped the learners to make proper interpretations and not translations. That was key. That was key. They were not even thinking from British accent or British listening to Spanish, but actually they were moving from British listening to English interpretations. Six, the whole audio content was understood by comprehending specific oral chunks or specific aspects determined by, determined by each listening circle role instructions. By this, mean, by this means, it was easier to understand in comparison to the traditional way. What is that? Um, some usually, and in certification exams, in, even though in the practice, in our English practice, uh, believe it, tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, please, if I'm, if I'm mistaken, tell me if I'm mistaken, but actually normally and typically, Listen audios, they, we, we, we reproduce, so we play the audios twice, right? Even the certification exams, they go twice. So this, uh, this exercise helped the students to maybe in the first, when it's play the audio once, they will focus on vocabulary context, and in the second time, they will focus on delivery in the other room. Do you know what I mean? So they they would have a full picture of what is actually going on in the audio instead of just being anxious and really nervous to get to memorize as much as they can or take notes really quickly because the listening is coming to its end. So they would actually uh, catalyze and they would actually uh, focus their attention to a specific thing to pay attention to. And then the next time that they would listen, they would focus on the next, on the next, on the next part of their aspects. And that helped a lot. So number seven, helpful exercises as preparation for a test. Helpful exercises as a preparation for a test. Yeah, definitely, because teacher, we're gonna have the, uh, the certification exam soon, so this helps. Teacher, the certification exam is in British accent, this helps. Eight, it promoted teamwork among the learners, definitely. I mean, definitely. It was, as I said before, the, even though there was different stages for both, different audios for both groups, Something which has, was common base was that both groups they had in the circular listening activities, they had individual work and, and actually group team, group work, working in teams. And it was for us, for Fanny and I, it was very important to leave, let the student to understand his own way. Some of you are visual, some of you, some of you, some of us are visual, some of you are more kinesthetic, some of us are more the, auditive. So what we did was respect 
the way the, the approach each learner is using a routine license for comprehending better. And then that's what they were given some time. How much they were given about 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, even though they needed to do some research at times. And afterwards, they would report all that information. So they did not keep that information with them, but actually they helped and contributed uh, for the others to understand better the whole scenario of the each listening. And I think that's it, right? I mean, yeah, we posted the, the, the references utilized. And as for me, thank you. And Fanny wants to say something, right, Fanny? <laughs> yes, of course. We, thank you, Miguel. We want to invite you to meet Saltillo, the, the land of the Sarape, and visit the Benemérito Escuela Normal de Coahuila. This is the building of our school. We want you to invite uh, to discover the wonders of Benemérita and Coahuila. Thank you. I would encourage you to be the host for the next year. It looks as a wonderful building that you would <laughs> definitely love to visit in, in Coahuila. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have around uh, 10 minutes. So in case anybody wants to go uh, further with some of the comments that we have here, I think we are pretty much on the same channel. Or uh, if anybody else want to, uh, wants uh, to ask uh, something to our speakers today, maybe something that you want to develop further. Uh, Bernardino would like to see the slide of the sources, please. Miguel or Fanny. Oh, yes, Miguel, can you and, I was, yes, I was reading, I was, excuse me, I was reading that some of the teachers have already used the British Council uh, website. And that's, that's a very good resource. Yes. And uh, Jorge, you can open your microphone if you want to come. Would you say resources, you mean okay. the references or the resources, the audio listening, the, the listening audio resources? Mm, well, the Bernardino just wants the slide of sources, maybe your references. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, the references. And now, I'm sorry, Jorge. Uh, okay, you now... can you hear me? Yes. Okay, congratulations. Uh, it's an excellent presentation. Uh, well, I just want to come uh, to make some comments from my own experience. Okay, I agree with you guys uh, about this uh, thing that uh, listening should be first before everything else. Okay, but unfortunately, many teachers, most teachers, I think, put it uh, at the end of the line. Okay, or maybe they skip all the uh, listening activities. And that's a problem because they, they keep the listening just for the exam. This is terrible because our students have, uh, they have to answer or uh, take some tests on listening before doing or having doing this uh, uh, as practice. Okay, well, I agree with that. I, I think that should be the first. And the other thing I think is a problem is because uh, we associate or students associate listening with, with exams, only with exams. And I found in my students this, uh, this situation, uh, they fail the listening test, not just for ignorance or lack of practice, but uh, for a, a, a lot of stress, anxiety. Okay, so well, I try to help them in some ways. For example, as I wrote in this uh, in the chat, uh, letting them know in advance the uh, clue or the key vocabulary and phrases, so that they have some kind of knowledge, previous knowledge. But also, we work this way. Every time we had a listening activity, I remind them that that was not a test, that was not for grading, that was for learning, for practicing listening, that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, that they have to be, to be calm, quiet, but also relaxed. And every time we had a listening activity before that, we had these breathing exercises. Breathing exercises, yes, the breathing, just to calm down, and to uh, be relaxed. And once my students were relaxed, I usually turn off the lights and close the shades and ask them to sit comfortably. And 
enjoy the recording. I always told him, you're going to learn a lot from this recording. It's about a very interesting um, subject and you can enjoy uh, listening to or hearing uh, native speakers speaking about very interesting stuff. So enjoy it. And if you relax, your brain will keep all the information you need to answer questions in case you have to answer questions. But not all the time listening was for testing. So, well, it, well, let me tell you this. All my students at the beginning of the course failed the listening tests. And at the end, they had excellent, excellent results when we had listening tests. Because tests, because they, they were so used to that and they enjoyed really what they listened to. And we practice a lot with podcasts, for example, the BBC. Okay. So, well, it's my own experience. So I congratulate these guys because listening should be the, uh, I think the, the first thing of our first concern as teachers of English and looking for uh, creative ways of promoting the practice of listening and dissociating it from tests, grades, failing or passing. I think it's essential to get good results. That's all, thank you very much. Thank you, Jorge. You may thank you, Jorge. Really great insights. Yeah. If you, if you, if I may, may I, may I say something? Yes. yes. Yeah. Just the other thing that I want to remind everyone is that uh, go back, go back when you learned your first uh, your maternal your mother tongue. Go back, go back when you when you actually learned your mother tongue. Actually, we were imitating what we heard. We uh, we were trying, right? We were going step by step. Uh, constructing our vocabulary, when we constructed the first concepts and ideas in our head, it was by that, by imitating, by listening to others. And so when I tell students, don't worry too much about right now having the beautiful, amazing, perfect American pronunciation, right? Actually, you should be proud of having your own accent, it's okay. But uh, instead of, if you don't really understand, don't worry too much right now about speaking and producing the language by speaking, but actually having this silent, silent period or just getting input, 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 input. And at some point, at some point, your brain's gonna associate ideas with sounds, with pronunciation, with accents, with this, with that, and then you're gonna produce the language. But actually, what sometimes sometimes is not really possible because of the syllabus is really packed at schools. But uh, but independently, when I do independent work uh, teaching languages, is First week, or even sometimes even one month, is about you don't have to say anything, but just listen. Not listen only to me, but listen out here, listen to conversations, listen to podcast, listen to this, listen to that, because you're just getting input, 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 which is will be later replied, replied and produced by you just because you heard two, two weeks ago. Okay, and that is, I don't know, I think that's magic. It's not that what I'm doing is magic, but the listening, having, having the students exposed to a lot of listening is magic. That's what I mean by that. Exactly. We, I think we all agree with you on, on that. So thank you very much, guys. And I would like to go now to our final section of this talk. And um, Miguel, I'm going to ask you if you can please stop sharing your screen. And now, well, thank you very much, really, to everyone who has joined us today in this uh, talk. Now I would like to present uh, Fanny and uh, Manuel. I would like to present you with our, cert our participation certificate. Soy la Benemérita Centenaria Escuela Normal de Jalisco. Otorga la presente constancia a Fanny Castañeda Moreno por su valiosa formación como ponente de la ponencia extensa Listening Circles a Pivotal Measure to Enhance English Learning en el marco del Congreso Nacional de Formadores C en Escuelas Normales. And, um, of course, we also have uh, one for, just give me one moment, let me find it. We also have one for... Miguel. Miguel, uh-huh, just, I have it right here. 
Thank you. And here it is. La Benemérita Centenaria, Escuela Normal de Jalisco, otorga la presente constancia. A Miguel Eduardo Luna Hernández por su valiosa contribución como ponente de, de la ponencia extensa Listening Circles, a Pivotal Measure to Enhance English Learning en el marco del Congreso Nacional de Promoción de Inglés en Escuelas Normales 2021. So once again, guys, thank you very much for your wonderful contributions and uh, experiences. And exactly as Irina said, it's a project to be continued because we can't just stop here. So I will remind you guys that uh, we are now going to have a little break and uh, we'll see you soon for the last leg of the tour. Thank you very much for joining us and I'll see you in our last two talks. Goodbye Thanks, everyone. everyone. Thanks Thank everyone, you. see you, bye bye. Thank you, Carmen, thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Carmen. Carmen. Thank you guys. Miguel, thank you. Miguel, bye bye. Yeah. Miguel, I'm sorry. No problem, bye, see you guys.